Hello everyone and welcome to Beyond Focus TV. My name is Angie Daniel and I am the hostess for the show. On tonight's show we have with us Dr. Gilbert Rosarian. She represents an eye of a dream, an organization that's working directly in Haiti with getting kids to educate them to do better in the future. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'll introduce her to you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are here with Dr. Rosarian. She is the founder of An Eye of a Dream, an organization that's in Haiti right now, helping kids to do better, like in terms of education, in terms of helping them understand what their value system is. Uh, without any further ado, I'm going to introduce to you Dr. Rosarian. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. On, on your website, we talk about, like, I know that you directly promote education, but there's so much about sexual abuse and violence, um, of um, physical abuse, things like that. Before, well, before we start into all of that, I wanted to kind of mention um, who you are. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself first and how you started the organization? And then I'll get in deep into the organization itself. Yes, I'm a physician. I completed my education in New York. Mm -hmm. I uh, grew up in Haiti, okay. and I moved with my family, mm -hmm. actually, uprooted the whole family, my mother and father, and brought us to New York. Mm -hmm. at, it was right after high school, so at this point, I, I went directly to college, to City College, my, okay. and, um, and after that, I went to medical school. I graduated in 1986 and I, uh, with school, and I completed my residency in 1989. I'm an internist, a board certified internist. I'm in private practice in Harlem, okay. uh, which is sort of my second home because I, I moved to Harlem. I went to school in Harlem right after Haiti. And um, I, I was almost disconnected to Haiti because I was in the midst of uh, education and mm -hmm. um, raising children until 2004. I started going to Haiti again at, after a disaster that occurred in, in Gonaive. Mm -hmm. And gradually I, I became uh, involved with Haitians in Haiti. Okay. And uh, right now I am fully involved with Haitians <laughs> in Haiti. I see that. I see that. Yeah. Are, you, are you originally from Gonaive? Yes. I was okay. born in Gonaive. And I, Gonaive really have seen my entire childhood okay. and adolescence. And my adulthood really occurred in, in New York. New York. Okay. Yes. So the question behind the idea of the organization, what does an eye of a dream mean to you? I, in, in going to Haiti since 2004, I started... Uh, trying to figure out how to get involved with the schools and the hospitals. And, and I, I really, I, I was on a search for it since 2004. Mm -hmm. and, and then I realized that my heart is with education, mm -hmm. is with changing mindsets, with inspiring people that uh, they have their own power. S and, Every time I went into a school, I started with the school that I went to. Mm -hmm. 
And then I visited other schools, outside of the schools, physically outside the schools. It's very turbulent. In. You see a lot of people walking, working, selling, children, people looking for life, really. And as soon as you enter the school, it, it becomes really calm and quiet. And there is learning, there is laughter, mm -hmm. and ambitions, mm -hmm. dreams. And, and uh, to me, it felt like the eye of a hurricane. The whole turbulence is on the outside. And that's what inspired the name Eye of a Dream. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, part of my question is it's a two part question. One is that how do you explain to the Haitian community in Haiti? Because I know on your website you talk about it a whole lot, so I kind of want to. It's one of my passion too, getting people to understand the difference of what sexual abuse is, the difference of what sexual violence is, and physical violence, because culturally, a whole lot of us don't understand what it means for a husband to physically abuse a, a wife. Um, well educated in New York, you know, grew up here, for you to go back and, and then to see these type of things and helping people understand that it's not a norm. How do you do that? I. I started uh, understanding violence against women as violence mm -hmm. since I was a child. Uh, be because w when you listen to grown ups talking about it, mm -hmm. when I listened to uh, what my mother's friends were going through with their own husbands, it, it wasn't characterized as violence. Exactly. So w when I was a little girl, I would walk by their house, and, and I, I knew it was violence because I could hear her scream. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the, um, the tribulations that were in their lives w was not transferred to children, explained to children as something that is wrong, it, or, or illegal for that matter. Mm -hmm. So I, I s sort of took that to heart when I was a little girl, and it stayed dormant inside of me until I became a physician. And in, in encountering the same situations in emergency departments, mm -hmm. in an atmosphere where the law gives you the right to. to understand that you have the right to report that person, mm -hmm. you have the right to be safe in your own home. And that took me back, that took me back to the times when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. where it, it wasn't considered violence. So when, when I went back to Haiti, situations have changed a little bit because you could see on billboards and, and uh, they talk about it on the radio, on television, that you are not supposed to be hit in your own house, in your own home. You have your own power. You have your own freedom. You can speak your mind. Uh, but I still feel that it's not enforced well. That's not enforced. That's not so enforced. I, I would Skype with women and figure out where they stand on that, how they feel about that. Mm -hmm. They know it's wrong, but they don't feel that they have the support of uh, the government Is or even their neighbors. Thing, would you say? Would, would you say it's cultural? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely it's cultural. That uh, the rights of women are, are just overlooked. Yeah. Um, we're going to continue because I want to come back to having a conversation about the organization in itself, um, why you created it, and what inspired you. But we're going to take a short break. Um, we'll be right back. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back to continue our conversation. Welcome back. We are here having a conversation with Dr. Rosarian, 
She is the creator, founder of an Eye of a Dream, an organization that's working in Haiti to educate young young um, kids. Be if you are just watching us for the first time, please go on Facebook and check us out. Like us if you can, please. We'd appreciate it. And we are here every Tuesday night at 10 p.m., same place, same time. Continue our conversation. Um, we were talking about, you know, the idea of what physical and sexual abuse were to women, which is part of what you, you know, your passion, you're passionate about. But um, I wanted to go back to the organization that you've created. Can you tell me a little bit about the organization, when it was created, and why why did you create it? I, the my My goal was to really promote education mm -hmm. and at the same time teach young people, boys and girls, don't forget the boys, Yes. Uh, boys and girls about the value of education, the power of education. Yes. It's so important to be able to express what it is mm -hmm. that you dream about, that you would like to put at the service of your community. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel that that's where they're gonna learn in, in school. And at the same time, as they're growing up, don't forget, 50% of young people are, are young in yeah. Haiti. Yeah. Uh, if you start with them and, and teach them what health is yes. and teach them how their, their bodies are going to change and the hormonal changes that comes with that and the urges that come with mm -hmm. that, uh, they, they're going to learn that their bodies are sacred. Mm -hmm. Your body should be treated with uh, respect uh, uh, from respect. you and from other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that there, is, there are a lot of frustrations. Mm -hmm. um, unemployment, for example, it's hunger, yeah. lower education, mm -hmm. all these are, are just the challenges that mm -hmm. young people must, must face. But if you teach them early how to deal with uh, their frustration and negotiate, um, a disagreement without violence, mm -hmm. they're going to learn it early. So a, in a sense, education is a way to prevent domestic and sexual violence. Okay. You catch it before it happens. Because okay. when you don't arm the youth with uh, their own um, intellectual, Knowledge, yes. cognitive capacity to deal with the frustration, then, the then someone else will take it will take their mind from you and direct them in the wrong, on, down the right, the wrong path. Okay. I, usually, I think for me, looking at things from a different point of view, like looking at it from the outside, I've always believed that there's that one moment that triggered it. So what was the year for you? And then how did you start, decided to start it? The year for me, I know it was in progress since 2004. Mm -hmm. The year for me was 2011. Okay. That, uh, in, in going back to after the, the earthquake, I went back in 2010, okay. and uh, the violence had really c came yes. to, to the surface. Yes. In, in Haiti, there are no doors. You can't yeah. hide you behind can't hide. doors exactly. if you have a million or more people Just in, in the industry, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So now everybody was there witnessing the violence. Mm. And uh, although it wasn't in Gonaive, but you could see that... It triggered. It, yes, everyone that that was displaced, the people that were displaced in Port-au-Prince were gradually Absolutely, yeah. going to Gonaive. So the population had increased in okay. Gonaive. Mm -hmm. The schools were coming, uh, were too crowded. Okay. And I, at that point, I, I think, I thought to myself, this is the time to start. Okay. Um, for me, I think we can uproot anything. We could do, we could decline the level of poverty with education. We could do so much. Um, looking at Haiti's situation right now, it's almost, what, since 2010? It's almost January 2013 is coming up. What are your plans and goals for, for the organization in Haiti for 2013 right now? I, I made the commitment to pay education for 11 children. There are six girls and, and five boys. Mm -hmm. uh, my commitment to those children is what's driving me to raise funds. Mm -hmm. uh, raising funds is, is not something new to me. I did raise funds before for kids with asthma at mm -hmm. Metropolitan Hospital. It takes a lot of work, um, lots of energy, mm 
and you have to be persistent and calling and calling and writing yeah. letters. The, the reason is th those children are counting on me to make this happen. Mm -hmm. So this is my number one obligation, is to make sure that their education is paid for. Okay, are you talking about just 11 kids or a specific school in itself? The, it's 11 children and okay. they go to different schools. They okay. all come from the same school though, but they branch out to different schools. Okay, so what's the age range right now? About 11 to 13. To 13, okay. What are your, for example, how would you like to up, you know, would you like to open this organization to a bigger num amount of kids, or is it just like you're working with these 11 kids? No, I would love to open it to more children. Um, it's, it's the energy that goes into that. Okay. I'm hoping to grow, absolutely, because the, the children were, were chosen very carefully. Okay. Uh, I was going to ask you about that. Like, how were you just like decided to pick those 11 kids, or were they? No, I affiliated uh, with the school in Gonaive, mm -hmm. L'Ecole Presbyterale. Okay. And w with the the principal of the school, we came we came up with several applications, and we went through them, and picked 11 children. But it it, it almost broke my heart because there are so many children who yes. could benefit yes. from something like that. But I had to stay within my financial boundaries. Okay, so are you doing this all on your own? Is this, because I, I'm trying to get people to understand that this is an adventure you're taking on your own to do. You, this is your money, your trip, your time. You know, you're investing emotions, you're investing physical time, you're investing your personal time to help a community to grow. I, I want people to understand that we could do so much more. We could do so much more as, as, a, as a group, as a team. We're going to take a short break when we come back so you can explain to the community how you started it and if they'd like to do something even as close to that or if they'd like to participate, maybe you can open your doors to more kids and we could try to work on that and help you with it. We're gonna take a short break, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Beyond Focus TV. We are here with Dr. Rosarian. She is the founder of An Eye of a Dream. We were talking about how you raised funds for this organization. Can you, because I would like for my goal in life, my goal in doing this show is to get people to be involved in community work because I, 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 I believe that there's no way we can make anything happen in any country, in any community, in any base services without having others that to work with us. So um, can you tell us how you do your fundraising and, and how do you get to support those 11 kids? The moment I chose the children, I made a list of people that I was going to approach for 
$500. It's, it costs $500 per, at least that's what we give, mm -hmm. $500 per, dollars per child for the, for the year of yes, schooling. For the year of so I made a list of people and, and I And that's private them. school? Private school. Private school. We just want people to understand that. Yes, yeah. it's private school. And I approached them personally. Mm -hmm. And I told them my goals. I showed them the pictures. They know about my uh, how many times I've been there on my travels, mm -hmm. and and I reassured them that this entire one hundred percent of this money is going to go to educate a child, okay. and that's how I raised their, their tuition. Okay, is there uh, some sort of like a link between the person that's supporting the child and the child, or is it through you? No, it's all through me. All through you. Yes. Okay, if anyone would like to support in any way, shape, or form, do you host parties? Do you, what do you do to, to raise funds besides having your own personal friends? I, I plan to host the party. Okay. And I'm, I'm very optimistic that we'll raise funds for, for the children. And I, I continue, I, I, for example, I just had a symposium. Yes, and I the saw symposium that. Was yes, can on, you talk about that a little bit? Because I, like, I kind of like wanted you to bring it up. Yes, uh, it, it occurred on October 10th, mm -hmm. and I, it was at City College, my alma mater. And uh, the symposium covered the process of treating someone who survived violence yes. from the moment they come to the emergency department mm -hmm. until they leave and afterwards. Yes. Uh, so the, the, the time that someone comes to the emergency and complains of either sexual or domestic violence, you are taken in by a, inside a room by uh, mm -hmm. assault like team. A it's a sexual assault yes. uh, response, response team, team that mm -hmm. responds to you. So someone would be, I, for example, would examine you yeah. to make sure that you are medically um, in, in good shape. Yes. And if there is anything to treat uh, yes. that could I happen agree. surgically or medically, we would do that. And there is uh, a, a, worker. a collection of evidence mm -hmm. that uh, that Have occurred right away. And mm -hmm. there is a social worker in the emergency department and a detective that comes to collect the evidence and takes in it. They take it to the medical examiner's office and and to the DA's office who's mm -hmm. going to defend the case. And someone a social worker will take care of uh, the aftercare mm -hmm. and what it takes to rehabilitate family and friends who have uh, suffered this violence with you. So we, we covered all the aspects of that. It took about two hours, but it was uh, um, a, a dream for me to mm -hmm. achieve that. And I, I would love to take such a team to Haiti yes. and, and show them the model of treatment, treatment. for someone who survived that. So that's violence. part of your plan, your, your goal plan. Because I think, I mean, I when I saw the website, I'm thinking, like, look at this. We culturally don't understand the aftermath that comes with abuse, especially sexual abuse. I mean, literally... I, and, and I mentioned this to a young lady right before I, I came on the show. We were talking about, you know, a, a young man had, for over the past weekend, killed his girlfriend and, and her lover. And then the way people are talking about it, it's like it's part of a norm. You understand? How do we separate violence from love? How do we separate physical violence from what it's supposed to be? And then how do you take it from here? The concept, you understand, it's, it's a, a changing of mind. If we can change our mind here, then we can change people's mind and elsewhere. Like, for example, Haiti. How would, do we get them to understand that culturally this is not supposed to be a norm? Beating up on somebody is not a norm. Killing somebody is not a norm. You know, we need to stop the violence from our, our own backyard and then kind of help our, you know, our people to do better. You understand? Yes, changing of mindset, a changing of attitudes, it's something that I always make my focus yes. in approaching my own culture. Yes. And, and I feel that you, you can really tell them about it, but you have to give them resources and skills exactly. to, to deal with frustration, to deal with urges to commit violence on mm -hmm. somebody. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to uh, leave someone uh, at the prayer of, in the throes of uh, a lack of education yes. and hunger, mm -hmm and um, homelessness, exposed to the elements, so you, you, are, you are not preparing them mm -hmm. to deal to with the yeah. difficulties of that. Okay. So if anybody would like to get in touch with you or get involved with an Eye of a Dream, where can they reach you at? Is there a phone number it's, or a website? Yes. Uh, the phone number is 
212-234-0059. And uh, the address is 58 Hamilton Place, New York, New York, 101031. And the website is eyeofadream.net. .net. So like they can get all the information and they can get involved in terms of getting, you know, funding. You see, I, it's extremely important for us to kind of like support support organizations that's doing better. I that's my goal to try to get people to see that we have so many organizations that's doing so much for Haiti, that's doing so much better. Not just for Haiti, but for women, for children, just trying to change lives. You know, for us to find a way to to make it like at least a dent. You know, just kind of like brush off a little bit of, of, of the sadness of of you know the aftermath of everything else that has happened. So any last word to the community you'd like to Yes, say? I, I think we can do even better. Mm -hmm. he, you know, the, uh, to me, what's going to change uh, a, a culture really is, is in uh, empowering the mm -hmm. people who live there. Yes. It's it in taking their effort, honor it, and help them develop it. Uh, that that's one of one of my examples are uh, is a woman who she's um, she's been in the community for 41 years she delivered every baby every baby she's never been to school but she has excellent wisdom mm -hmm. and she has skills of practicing it this is someone I want to support yes so first to find ways of getting funding and 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 through your organization so i want to thank you so much for coming thank you for bringing ideas that you know the community can benefit from or talk about because um, violence is really huge in every community especially in the haitian community we we need to really talk about it and and move on from it so this is the end of our show hope you watched and you loved it because i have just love this conversation. I will see you next Tuesday, same place, same time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, it was really cool. Oh, son.